hi again and this is uh, continuing our lectures for research methodology the focus of today's video is on the problem on what is a problem and uh, i was reading the compendium the compendium that i gave you of uh, a selection of an article by booth colomb and williams the craft of research where i've given a chapter on the questions asking questions finding answers and in that i had looked at uh, the problem uh, i'd asked you to look at what is a practical problem and what is a research problem and we tried to look at both uh, also in class we had said something about what a problem was i just briefly mentioned on the board and uh, and i'm just looking at the notes that i wrote over here i said that problem is one something that motivates the research uh, two it is something that the research tries to address or solve um a three a problem or an issue is something that your research will have implications for it is something that uh, your research applies to uh, that problem again probably in terms of solution what i'd also mentioned uh, that a research problem cannot solve practical problems or at least usually it can't if a practical problem is something like uh, uh all the churches are being very materialistic Uh, my research paper on that topic will not solve the materialism of the church so uh, uh, so the practical problems remain practical problems so what is the purpose of a research problem why are we trying to do research uh, so that's what this video is about and so we'll talk about how there are practical problems and then there are research problems and what then would be the value of a research problem in this case very briefly a research problem would address the mindset of materialism in the church and hopefully those who read it uh, will be influenced and will change their mind will change their thinking so that they can act uh, practically in their churches or at least in their own lives uh, so there is a purpose of a practical problem and there is a purpose for research problem once again let me put another disclaimer that in most cases uh, different departments uh, deal differently with the uh, research problems and problem statements so i am not giving you a definition of problem statement it's best to understand how does your uh, department look at this but i'm just giving you a general idea of problem statements uh, with a bias towards uh, the theology department because that's where i'm from and you can probably and i'll focus particularly on the practical and the research problems okay so the first point uh one of the things i learned from this article this booth colomb and williams article uh was to uh, more intentionally use the language of practical and research problems uh, i think that's a good good uh, distinction uh let's so we'll begin with the idea that all good research papers or all good dissertations which means like an mmth thesis uh has a problem has an issue to address it's about something now this is something more than a topic we've known what a topic is so for instance missions is a topic or even church growth or pastoral counseling methods these are all general topics or even uh, uh christ in the new test uh, in the gospels or christ in the gospel of john or uh, moses and exodus or the role of exodus for liberation these are all topics but what a problem is uh, is that it takes that topic and makes it researchable it makes it something that we want to research i found uh, uh, this especially in page number uh, 51 uh, where uh, these authors booth colomb and williams distinguish between the problems and topics in 4.1.3 that section and uh, they basically say that when uh, experienced researchers are talking about their research they'll talk in terms of shorthand they'll say things like so in the sense like what i just said this topic we'll say i'm doing a paper on liberation theology or i'm doing a paper on religion these are very general so we think that oh these people are doing the paper on that so that's enough a topic uh, so then these authors say as a result many beginning researchers confuse having a topic uh Uh, with having a research problem now that's that's what uh, we're trying to do we're trying to highlight the importance of a research problem it's not just a topic it's something more than a topic so basically what they're saying is that uh, uh, the research problem gives a focus it gives you something that your paper is about it's it's something that you're uh, what you're going to be addressing in your paper uh, like what we had done in the uh, thing about the research question 
but over here, without that, it just seems to be uh, a general topic where the researcher just gathers data. And so he's saying that the beginning researchers, or sorry, these authors say that the beginning researchers struggle to find a principle for deciding uh, what to include in their report and what not. And finally, they just collect all the information, just bring it all together, read one book, read another book, read something else, all about this one topic and present it. And uh, then they feel frustrated when the examiners or the teachers say, what's the point of your paper? Or you're just explaining what is the point of view or what is the critique? And uh, that's very confusing. So uh, what they say is that what you need is more than a topic. You need a research problem, which means what are you trying to solve? What in particular are you trying to address? So let's take, uh, for instance, uh, an example of... In fact, okay, let me do something. Uh, let me promote my book. <laughs> yes, this is my book. Please buy it now. <laughs> okay. uh, now, I'm going to give you an example of what a research problem is from using my book, What is Religion? Now, the, the reason I'm doing that is like, just to give you an example, and this book is, uh, is of course, at the PhD level. But just to show you what I mean, that uh, what a research problem is. So right in the introduction itself, uh, this is in page number one, I talk about the problem of defining religion. And I say that, uh, that in the popular level, in the, in the popular sense, uh, there seems to be no consensus of what religion is. Uh, everybody seems to have a different definition of religion. Sometimes a thing like communism is called a religion. Whereas sometimes Hinduism said it's not a religion. Uh, and then uh, Supreme Court, for instance, says that Hindutva is not religious. And, uh, uh, and this goes on even in academics, even where colleges and all that. Some people uh, are trying to figure out what is religion. And there's no one definition. There are all too many definitions of what religion is. And so that is a problem. Uh, that's something that needs to be solved. So clearly with that problem, you can almost guess what my paper will be about. My paper will be about, or my dissertation will be about clarifying that topic. What is religion? So I'm saying that there is no clarity about what is religion, but we need clarity about religion. So therefore my paper offers a clarity about religion. Uh, that's just an example to show how important a problem is. So rather than saying, oh, I'm providing a definition of religion, I'm trying to solve the confusion between religion. Okay, so that's that's something that I'm trying to do. That is the particular problem that I'm trying to address. Now, let's go to the issue of the difference between research problems and practical problems. Now, Booth, Cologne, and Williams, they, they highlight a lot about uh, what is called conditions and costs uh, of problems and how you frame it. And I found that helpful, uh, especially if you're technical minded. But if you're not technical minded, I think if you read this, you will find yourself getting distracted and it may not make sense. Perhaps this will make sense when you become more experienced in your research. So I would recommend that uh, if you can understand what they mean by conditions and costs, okay. But to simplify it, I would just simplify it with one word. Significance. Is your problem significant? Is it, is it something that has uh, impact? Now, most of us in theological research know how to talk like that because we know what it means to have an impact. Uh, we know that the churches are struggling. We know that the mission field is needing so much. We know that theological uh, thinking in India is so weak. We know that in biblical studies, there is so much controversy about texts that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of. Uh, there's so many texts that need to be solved, so many interpretations that need to be reinterpreted. We know that in religions, so much needs to be done to understand uh, Hinduism or Islam from a Christian perspective. There's so much to be done. So we know significance. So anything that we can show, uh, there is a significance of it. Then we are on the right track to point to a problem. But going back to the distinction between research problem and practical problem, I think most of us are good at... Uh, finding practical problems in India because we know that we come from churches of huge need or difficulties or challenges and uh, so it's easy to identify what the church is struggling with or what people are struggling with. The harder thing for us to do, especially at the MTH and the doctoral level, is to make it an issue of research and that's the distinction between practical and research problems. 
So let me give you an example from my book as well. So practically, I would say that there's a problem that in the world, or at least in India, uh, there is no clarity about the definition of religion. So people are struggling with one definition, another definition, and so on and so forth. Almost like uh, they, they are not, they're not, uh, we don't really know what we're talking about. So somebody will say, oh, Hinduism is not a religion. And, uh, and if I was to say as a Christian, oh, Christianity is not a religion. So who is right if you were going on a bus and saying, what is your religion? And he says, sorry, I don't have a religion. Does that mean he's an atheist? Are we talking about different words? So even plain conversations, there's a problem about, do we even know what the word means? But I don't stay there. Uh, I, I identify a very practical problem. And the practical problem in my book is that there is a problem in the academic study of religion. means in religious studies itself. In secular academic studies of religion, there, there's no clear def definition. We would assume that secular academics is clear about what religion is, but they're not very clear of how to define it. Then I go on to identify the problem of religion in theological study of religion. This is on page number 25 in the South Asian edition. Uh, I say it's not just a problem in uh, academic secular studies where they're trying to understand what religion is, but even Christians who are trying to understand what religion is, they, there is very much uh, of a lack of clarity. Uh, some people talk about how, uh, you know, like, uh, 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 like there's all this whole thing, exclusivism, inclusivism, pluralism. We all make certain assumptions of what religion is, but there's very rarely, are they even clear about what they're talking about. In fact, instead what I find is that uh, academics, especially Christian academics, tend to, uh, uh, they, they tend to say, uh, focusing on the definition of religion is not even important. Let's get into the practical aspects of relating religion to religion. So then I say we need to be clear what we're talking about, not just in a practical sense, but even in a research sense. If I'm writing a paper on religion, I need to be clear what I mean. If I'm trying to define religion, I need to be clear what I mean as a Christian theologian. So that's the sort of problem that I set up over here. So I have a practical problem, uh, which is the conversations uh, amongst people. And then also ha I have a research problem, which talks about scholars. So let me just uh, summarize this very simple but key point. A practical problem is something that uh, affects something that we do, or in day-to-day -day life. A research problem, more very intentionally or very uh, specifically deals with something about understanding and uh, lack of knowing. It is about research. It is an issue about scholars. It's an issue that is found in libraries or uh, field data. It's something that is found through research. It is not simply, uh, uh, it's not simply a practical problem that is affecting churches today, but it goes particularly to worldviews, ideologies, thinkings, uh, books uh, and it finds the problem there. So that that key thing, if you can identify a research problem in your paper, then you're very clearly writing a paper about something. You're writing a paper about perhaps two different views about uh, one topic. Perhaps you're writing about a debate that is happening in religious studies. Perhaps you're writing about a debate that's happening in the interpretation of the Old Testament text. Perhaps you're writing about missiological methods, holistic method, versus the integrated method. Are they different? Are they the same? Even practical subjects like missiology can have research questions. And most scholars, um, uh, like in terms of doctoral level, find research questions to address. It's not just practical. Practical is almost the motivation to do the research. But the research questions must be highlighted and addressed. And that's what makes research uh, so valuable and good research so indispensable for the church. So I want to just summarize therefore what is a, a, a research, a practical problem. A practical problem is something that faces the church. It affects doing, it affects day-to-day -day living. A research problem deals specifically with something uh, that has to do with books, ideas, methodologies, how to define something, how to do something, which counseling method to apply, which interpretative skill to apply. Those are the research problems that, uh, that are important uh, that are for, for research papers, for papers or for the thesis. Now, why, why is it so important to have this problem? 
why is it so important to have a research problem or forget even a practical problem? The thing is, again, let me say, it, it not just motivates your research, but it gives your research focus. What is your paper about? It's not just about one topic. It is about solving a particular issue. If there is a debate, then your paper is trying to solve that debate or at least take sides. You're either saying this one is correct and this one is incorrect. You're comparing contrasting uh, two scholars. You're comparing contrasting two methodologies. You're trying to find out which is the best way to counsel uh, a drug addict, for instance. These are ways, thinkings, uh, things that you write about so that other people can read and change their minds, change their understanding so that they can do something more practically. So, uh, so the research problem would shape your research, it will, it will direct your entire research so that finally, in the end, the conclusion would have solved that problem or at least have given a direction of how to solve that problem. It would have given us a way of addressing that problem. And without that clarity that there is a problem that you are addressing, your paper will simply be a report about a particular topic without any sharp focus of trying to solve or address an issue. And so that's why we are urging that uh, research problems and research is really important. Now I know I'm rambling a bit so I'm going to stop right now and I hope that in class I can further clarify this through practical examples. Thanks.